Hello everyone, welcome to 292 Baby Educational Videos. My name is Jim Coffey, I'm a communication professor here at Monroe Community College, and 292 Baby is the college's outreach to anyone caring for babies in our community. The goal of our educational programs is to bring information that might be of importance, that is of important to parents and caregivers of young children. Um, today's topic is gonna to be on infant mental health and emotional health, and I'm thrilled to have with me today Sarah Fitzgibbons, who is the clinical director of the SPCC. And Sarah, maybe you can tell us about that organization. I sure can. So SPCC stands for the Society for the Protection and Care of Children. Mm -hmm. It's an agency that's been around since 1875 in Rochester mm -hmm. and our common mission is helping infants, young children and children of all ages mm -hmm. in their families who have been impacted by trauma, adversity, loss, mm -hmm. um, poverty. Okay, so you're dealing with both the parents and the child. Yes. Okay, yeah. and you're as clinical director, yeah. um, your role and you're part of you're a board member too in New York State. Uh, yes, yeah, so I also serve as a board member for the New York State Association for Infant Mental Health. Okay, all right. And Which might surprise a lot of people that infant mental health is a big issue. It often does. Okay. All right. When I say infant mental health, people usually think of a baby laying on a couch <laughs> with Freud behind them. Oh yeah. Okay. But really, yeah. Uh, infant mental health isn't just about infants, and it's not just about mental health. Mm -hmm. It's about children zero to three mm -hmm. years old okay. and it's about promoting social and emotional health, the way infants and parents attach to each other mm -hmm. and how all of those pieces in those first three years of life mm -hmm. um, can really help or are, are, are the components that help infants grow into healthy developed adults. Okay, yeah. so we're going to approach this topic generally um, looking at three different things and the very first one is ghosts from the nursery, is yeah. that what you called it? Yes. Okay, and what does that mean? In the field of infant mental health, one of our pioneers is Donald Winnicott. In the 1940s he was a pediatrician. He said a lot of amazing things, but he said there's no such thing as just a baby. Meaning if we have a baby who's experiencing pain or is unhealthy or we're worried about, we can't understand that baby and we can't intervene with that baby unless we're seeing them in the context, in the relationship mm -hmm. of their important grown-ups in their life. Which would typically be parents. Which would typically be parents. Yeah. Um, and some families, their moms and dads or mm -hmm. grandmas or aunts or foster moms or mm -hmm. um, et cetera. Yeah. So ghosts from the nursery is a really important idea in infant mental health. And what it means is that we all have our own early childhood experiences. Mm -hmm. You and I both were babies. That's mm -hmm. our common factor usually in <laughs> life. I and question whether or not I had <laughs> an early childhood, but yeah. Uh, I bet you did. Yeah. And, and so we all uh, have these experiences and they're stored in our brains and in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have the words for them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're part of our family story. Mm -hmm. When you were a baby, X, Y, Z happened, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. used to love this or hate yeah. that. Um, and sometimes we even have the stories of hard things that have happened to us. Mm -hmm. When you were a baby, you were in a bad car accident. Mm -hmm. when, when you talk stories, you're talking memories. Memories, yeah, now, but also stories in our family, mm -hmm. right? My mom would say to me um, a story about being in a car accident, mm -hmm. and it's a story that I've learned the words for. Mm -hmm. But ghosts from the nursery um, are the pieces that we carry with us that sometimes we don't even know we're having in our mm -hmm. brains or our bodies. Mm -hmm that until we become parents, until we're caregiving mm -hmm. for a new baby, we don't realize we're caring necessarily. Mm -hmm. So um, they may surprise parents, right? I've got a new, brand new baby in my arms and I'm all of a sudden overcome with a feeling and mm -hmm. it's surprising and I don't know why, right? Or a body sensation. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the pieces that sometimes we have words for. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes we don't. Yeah. And those are what we call ghosts from the nursery. Okay. Now, I have no memories of three or before that. So I could have ghosts in that time period that are that are unconscious memories for me, right? Absolutely. And, yes. And, and so are, is, does the memory manifest as an emotion? Is that yes. what you're saying, like later? Yeah, or thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. I think many of us as parents experience this idea that we imagine we'll be a particular kind of parent mm -hmm. before we have children yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or feel a particular way. Yeah. And then when we're faced with three in the morning with a, baby, a colicky baby mm -hmm. or perhaps even a very quiet, sleepy baby, mm -hmm. we're suddenly struck by feelings or sensations or maybe even phrases or thoughts mm -hmm. or impulses yeah. that are surprising. And those come from somewhere. Yeah. And in infant mental health, that's what we call ghosts from the nursery, that yeah. they're pieces of our own early childhood. Mm -hmm. And while you say you don't have memories, we would say you do have memories, there's just not a story 
for yeah. the memory. Yeah. And the reason is because we didn't have language as a baby mm -hmm. when we were getting those memories, when those experiences were happening to us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess I, I, I think of it as um, uh, unconscious memory. Mm -hmm. I know a memory that I have that I'm not aware of. Yeah. You know, because like I could, let's say I got beat by an uncle who had a full beard and now I meet a grown man later, you know, as an infant. Mm -hmm. I meet a, and mm -hmm. He's got a full beard and I'm like, eh, something about him. I'm like, mm -hmm. what about, I don't know, mm -hmm. something about, mm -hmm. I'm pulling back. Yes. Uh, that stuff's coming back up. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. It's, um, what I'm hearing you say is that this is normal. It's absolutely normal. Yeah. And some people have pretty big ghosts. Yeah. But we all have some. Yeah. And um, the concept of ghosts from the nursery is not about blaming our parents or the people who cared for us. Mm -hmm. It's about um, recognizing and shining a light on our experiences mm -hmm. uh, that impact the way we now parent. Okay. That may get in the way of the best parent we want to be. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's really about normalizing that. We mm -hmm. all have them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe giving ourselves some kindness and attention to thinking or asking or just being with yeah. um, all of those things that might come up that are hard when we're parenting. I can see if someone, a parent, for the first time was not aware of this. Mm -hmm. And let's say they're changing the baby's diaper, they're waking up at 2 in the morning mm -hmm. and they find themselves angry yeah. and maybe feel guilty because they're feeling angry. And yet what you're saying is that if you can understand that, that would be a normal, a normal, it could be a normal reaction. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. 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 This is not about saying um, my mom did a good or bad job or my grandma did a good mm -hmm. or bad job. Yeah. Uh, we were all raised by people who are imperfect. Yeah. And situations, right? Mm -hmm. Being in a having a house fire. Yeah. Right. And then um, not recognizing the power of smelling smoke. Mm -hmm. Or, um, until you're sitting by a campfire, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and how that might bring up feelings or thoughts yeah. uh, or memories that make sense. Similarly with parenthood, right? We all, yeah. I remember my daughter, my son was pulling her, she was two years old, and pulling around the corner of the house, and it's a stucco house. And for some reason, she just stuck her head out and whacked her head on the corner, right? And so we had to take her to the hospital, yeah. and everything was fine. But she could have a ghost from... Uh, from the nursery mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she might mm -hmm. freak out on corners of houses or <laughs> she something. She might, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So, um, and so this could be, um, um, that's just a normal, you know, kids fall down when they're walking. Absolutely. Those ghosts, like you said, are not tied to necessarily bad parenting. They're not, but they are often tied to relationships. Okay. And so often these ghosts are ways that our caregivers, our parents, grandma, mom, dad, whomever, mm -hmm handled stress for us, mm -hmm. handled when there, when life was stressful. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I got really sick, for example, and had to go into the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, those ghosts from the nursery are coming not only from that experience of being poked and prodded as mm -hmm. a nine-month-old, yeah. but it's the adults around me and how they responded or didn't respond, how they were scared and how that impacted me. And yeah. all of that stuff is coming in mm -hmm. to me. And it's not going anywhere. That's making up who I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, very important to know. Just as we wrap up here, um, a final thought on the idea of ghosts in the nursery. I think my final thought is, we already talked about, is that there's a, everybody has these ghosts. Mm -hmm. And it's important not to say that they're bad or good, mm -hmm. but that we are aware that all of our experience leads us to the kind of parent we are now. Mm -hmm. So, and very important in terms of the mental health of the baby to understand that it's all within the relationship. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. I think our next topic is going to be on um, stress, toxic yes. stress. Yeah. So uh, thank you for that information. Yes. Hello everyone, welcome back to 292 Baby Educational Videos. Again, my name is Jim Coffey. I'm a communication professor here at MCC. And the college is trying to reach out to the uh, greater Rochester community to bring any information that's important for parents and caregivers of young children. And I'm continuing a conversation on infant mental health with Sarah Fitzgibbons, who is the clinical director at the SPCC. And um, so in this segment, we're going to be talking about stress in infants. Yes, right. we are. Import <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> important topic. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And, and so when you say stress with infants, what are you, what are you referring to? Well, we all know we all experience stress, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And what science is telling us is that, st is that we're increasingly knowing that stress impacts our bodies, the way we are, mm -hmm. um, brain and body and, and emotion, and it's similar to babies. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we know that children zero to three, their brains are developing at the fastest, um, most rapid, most important point in their life, mm -hmm. and stress has a big impact. Yep. So, so we can talk a little bit about different kinds of stress, okay. but it's important right. to know that babies yeah. experience it. Yeah. One thing I think, uh, at least for me, is important in this time is that often people aren't aware that a baby's brain is literally getting wired yeah. as a result of its interaction with the, like I remember reading where um, if a baby hears loud shouts and that, that the, the brain will actually go into a protective mode and not allow this to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be a type one, a negative kind of stress because there's good stress too, right? Um, right, yeah. I, I almost wish the side of a baby's head was transparent so that as you talk to them, you could actually see the growth of this, uh, these yeah. synaptic connections they're yes. called. So, yeah. Okay, so different kinds of stress. What's different the, kinds of stress. And I think it's also important, not only are our brains developing, but connected, of course, right with our brains is our physiology. Mm -hmm. So the way we respond with our startle response mm -hmm. from our nervous system, mm -hmm. right? The way we can react and startle. When you say physiology, you mean your body? The, yeah, okay. yeah, so our heart rate increases, right? Mm -hmm. Our breath gets faster, mm -hmm. we might sweat a little bit or mm -hmm. get really cold. Yeah. So if we hear a, a, a large dog comes and jumps right up at us at a, as a baby or even as a grown up, mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a response that mm -hmm. helps us survive, yeah. right? But part of the, our job also in our body is we're learning that we can calm down and when we should be activated and when we shouldn't be, mm -hmm. right? So it's brain and body really mm -hmm. that in those early years that we're aligning and figuring out. Yeah, and of course a baby can't calm themselves down, or right. can they? Right, so what we know about self-soothing, mm -hmm. some people agree and some people may disagree, okay. but I think this is true yeah. and science says so, yeah. that babies, um, when we think about babies learning how to self-soothe, mm -hmm. we need to stop thinking about that as babies being alone, mm -hmm. teaching themselves as individuals. Yeah. Self-soothing, when we're thinking about babies, is really infants learning how to use their caregivers to soothe. It's how I reach out to you as my mom or dad, mm -hmm. and you reach back out to me mm -hmm. to help me figure out, as I grow in those first three years, how to figure out how to calm my body mm -hmm. or relax or feel cared for and nurtured. Yeah. yeah. So once again, we're back to the relationship. We're back to, always back to the relationship. Yeah. So yeah. when we're looking at this, we're always looking at the, the baby and the caregiver. Yes. Whether that caregiver is mo uh, mom or dad. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. And so you had asked about types of stress, mm -hmm. and more and more it's been, it's been shown that there are three types of stress that infants and young children experience. The first one is positive stress. Mm -hmm. And positive stress are these little things, maybe even medium-sized things that impact a young child. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a dog dies. Perhaps there is a, um, we were talking earlier, lost their binky, can't mm -hmm. find it, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Those things are called positive stress. They're things that happen all the time to all of us as, as people, and they impact infants, but they help um, build resiliency. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to the second type, which is called tolerable stress. And that's sort of bigger things that happen, b really big things, perhaps mm -hmm. even like losing a mom or dad. Mm -hmm. um, a, a natural disaster that impacts where a child lives. And that tolerable stress is made tolerable because there's a grown-up or a set of grown-ups who are there to help mitigate, to buffer mm -hmm. the stress from really embedding in that infant's brain and body. Mm -hmm. So that's tolerable stress. Yeah. The really tough stress that we want to pay attention to is called toxic stress. And that is typically repeated exposure to stressful experiences mm -hmm. again and again. And it, that infant or young child doesn't have a grown up to rely on consistently for warmth, nurturing, sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So they can't figure out how to make meaning of the stress and they internalize it and then it really impacts, as we were talking about, their brain and body development, mm -hmm. and it impacts the way they are throughout their lifespan. Yeah, and again, this is, um, I can see where some of the stress would come from, like a natural disaster and that, mm -hmm. but most of the time it's probably related to the harmony or lack of harmony in the relationship the child has with their primary caregiver. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I always like to say, there's this concept of good enough parenting, which mm -hmm. we should all be gentle with ourselves as parents. Mm -hmm. If we can get it right about 80% of the time, yeah. we're good, yeah. right? I think we're all human. Yes, but, right, yes. so we have to be gentle with ourselves. We have ourselves. to be gentle with ourselves. Um, when we talk about the uh, ghost from the nursery in the first segment, yes. and then combine that with the stress, yeah. um, let's say a parent could actually have a ghost from their 
from their early childhood yes. where they're reacting in a negative way and that can influence that can cause stress in the baby then yeah right so these are interconnected both of absolutely these concepts. a good example would be a parent who is very very fearful mm -hmm. right and perhaps they have a ghost from their nursery something some experience that created a sense of anxiety mm -hmm. that they're now maybe even are surprised but are bringing to new parenthood yeah and so that sense of fear directly impacts their new baby, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so perhaps they're um, trying to reach and um, prevent baby from falling all the time and then that baby trips over their mom's caring hand, yeah. right? Yeah. And they pick up on that fear and anxiety. The baby does. The baby does yeah. and actually learns to mirror it, right? Yeah. We think that the, we know that parents mm -hmm. are the baby's first mirror, mm -hmm. right? They learn who they are and how the world works and mm -hmm. how relationships work in those first three years of life yeah. through their parent. And yeah. so then they learn how to fear or feel anxiety mm -hmm. through that parent. Yeah, okay. So the, uh, again, we're back to the importance of that relationship. Yeah. And then, uh, um, um, but the relationship itself, there's nothing material there, mm. right? I mean, you don't need to own a car or a house or any of mm -hmm. that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We're just talking the way that a parent interacts with the baby. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, even talking to a baby, right? That yeah. stimulates brain growth. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times, the, I think parents, very often, at least I'm running into this, where they see, a, let's say, a six-week-old baby. Mm -hmm. They just think it's a little lump, that not much is actually going on. Mm -hmm. And yet just the opposite's true, isn't it? The, uh, it sure is, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, a parent takes an extra five minutes on a diaper change and just talks to the baby. Of course, mm -hmm. in my kids, that's 10 times a day um, when they were little, <laughs> you know. But, but that actually will help them emotionally. It'll mm -hmm. help them cognitively. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe uh, sometimes parents don't realize if you're if you're talking to a baby, an infant, mm -hmm. that that might make them a better reader mm. five years down the line, mm -hmm. right? Because you have actually stimulated part of their part of their brain to grow those parts of the brains that they're going to need to do yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, relationship, 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 yes, right? Yeah. Um, so, what advice would you give parents in terms of uh, uh, stress? Avoid toxic stress, probably. But probably avoid if you can, right, yeah. of, right. Um, I think. For parents to be aware that we can't always prevent hard things from happening mm -hmm. to our families. Yeah. Um, some of us um, are more fortunate than others, mm -hmm. and some folks have a lot of adversity in their life. Yeah. Um, and so, so parents need to feel um, like they have a sense of safety and security and need to reach out and feel supported themselves mm -hmm. so that they can help buffer that stress for yeah. their infants. Yeah. So parents need support too yeah. in order to give it. Okay, okay. So just as a wrap up, that's actually a wonderful uh, final thought for that. Great. Um, but uh, the, what it meant to me was that parents need to be gentle with themselves yes. as well. And uh, okay. understanding this, maybe there's a better chance they can be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you again. When we come back, we'll have another topic related to infant mental health. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Welcome back everyone, I'm Jim Coffey. This is 292 Baby Educational Videos and we're talking infant mental health um, with Sarah Fitzgibbons, who's the clinical director at the SPCC, the Society for the Prevention and Care, no. Protection, Protection and, and Care, care of, children. of Children. It's a mouthful. Oh, okay, yes it is. <laughs> All right, Sarah, earlier we were talking about ghosts from the nursery mm -hmm. and about what happens early on in every one of our lives yeah. might manifest or make itself known later when we're parents yes. with, through emotions and behaviors and that. And now, we, then we looked at some stress issues mm -hmm. related, to, uh, related to that and the connection mm -hmm. to ghosts from the nursery. But there's such a thing as angels from the nursery too, right? And there so is. Can you tell yeah. us about that? Yeah. So, as we were talking about these ideas of ghosts from the nursery being people or experiences that we're carrying with us as parents mm -hmm. that are painful, mm -hmm. we also have these angels. Almost all of us do. Mm -hmm. And they may be a parent or they may be a number of people who in our early life came together and we have sort of woven a quilt mm -hmm. of healthy people who help buffer us mm -hmm. from stress, mm -hmm. right? So it could be a really special daycare provider who made sure to pay attention when I was getting dysregulated, when my body was getting ready and giving cues that I needed some soothing. Mm -hmm. And that person was with me and got to stay with me mm -hmm. for a year and a half in, in daycare. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that person became an angel from mm -hmm. my nursery. Yep. I may not even remember her name, mm -hmm. but I have a sense now that I have something that has been embedded in me that as a parent I can give to my 
infant or young child, mm -hmm. which is a sense of being attuned to being able to read somebody's cue mm -hmm. and being having the experience of having my needs met even yeah. before I could say yeah. the words to say what they were. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm understanding you right, then I could see the benefit of having two or even three people in tune with the same baby yeah. and both genders. Yeah. And that way you're getting a perspective, like I might say to you at the end of the day, did you notice anything about, right? Yes. And you could compare the cues and be able to respond yes. more appropriately. Yeah. One of the really nice things about having multiple caregivers mm -hmm. and thinking about multiple attachment figures now, mm -hmm. back in the old days, about 75 years ago, we thought that only moms and babies connected, mm -hmm. right? There was just one primary attachment figure. And now we know infants mm -hmm. and young children can have many and should have many, mm -hmm. um, many important people in their life, the people yeah. who are there regularly providing consistent consistency mm -hmm. and warmth. And so what we know is that all of us have these ghosts from the nursery. So there is something nice about having a community of me, my partner, husband, mm -hmm. and a grandma mm -hmm. who can help support an infant when I'm having a bad day mm -hmm. or when one of my ghosts are getting tripped up or triggered. Yeah. And so there's a community supporting that baby yeah. um, to help meet their needs and be sensitively in that mm -hmm. dance with that baby. Yeah. yeah. So in the first years of life, if you have that community, and earlier you said the word quilt, yeah. and the, the first image that popped in my mind was a web. Yeah. So you've got the, the three uh, people, like you just described, yeah. actually supporting that baby um, so that that infant is going to feel secure. Yes. Because emerging into this world is really a scary thought. You know, I mean, if we yeah. popped right into life as adult humans, we'd probably die right on the spot. You know, it'd be so stressful. So yeah. it's nice the way we're, the design is that you slowly awaken. And that's where this, yes. these angels would actually appear is in that, that awakening. And those angels are the, are the um, experiences or the people that allow us to be the best parents that we can be, mm -hmm. right? Again, whether we remember their names, yeah. whether it was a nice neighbor yeah. who always made sure we got off the bus when we were coming home from kindergarten, yeah. right? And, yeah. um, or it was our own mom. But the way we were nurtured is the way that will inevitably nurture our own children yeah. um, if, we don't, if we don't pay attention and think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And we're social creatures. I mean, we're yeah. designed to be in groups. Yep. You know, so the fact that if you have group care for a child. I mean, it's the, it almost is a cliche that the, it takes a village to raise a child, mm -hmm. but really true. Yeah. You know, that the, the more more kid, more people that are caring for that child, the yeah. more secure they'll feel. And we do want them to awaken gently to the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I often think of like if somebody came up and woke me up this morning at five o'clock by shaking me awake, my whole day is going to be, you know, it sets the, it sets the, um, the tone for one's life yes. in the way yeah. that they're awakened. Yeah. So, so I, mean, I would say it's not about quantity of caregiver. It's about quality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And quality meaning it's it's much better to have three or four mm -hmm. sensitively attuned caregivers mm -hmm. than ten. Yeah. And it's certainly about consistency, yeah. right? It's better to have one or two people that are able to provide that nurturing for that infant and young child throughout their years of early life mm -hmm. versus um, Cha frequent change, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you talked about a child care provider who could be an angel who was attuned to the child for a year and a half, if that relationship ended, that could become a, a not a good thing, right? I mean, so then they, be, they become attached and then the attachment mm -hmm. breaks. Well, as we had talked about, what helps buffer hard stress, right? Mm -hmm. what, what's the difference between harmful stress and not harmful stress? Right. And so saying goodbye to somebody who's cared for you is stressful. Sure. And life is full of goodbyes. Mm -hmm. But what's the thing that can buffer is a healthy relationship, yeah. right? Yeah. And a warm, a thoughtful transition to mm -hmm. a new caregiver. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they would attach again. Yeah. So that, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that just is surfacing to the top for me on this topic is that, and I think important for parents to know, is that there's nothing material. Mm. It doesn't mean they have more toys or more clothes or, or it's all the, it's all the, the mm -hmm. interaction with another human, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. um, and am I understanding that right? Is that how, you, how yeah, you're taking I, it? I, I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think the, the one piece that I will say is that um, there's a difference between having no, you know, having financial stress in a family sure. versus having a lot of stuff. Right. Yeah, so yeah. the um, stress of living where you don't know how you're going to feed your young child mm -hmm. is different than 
giving, making sure they have the newest tablet all the time, right? right? right and, yeah. and so it's important to make sure that families have enough resources so that parents aren't stressed mm -hmm. um, for those basic needs. But yeah. I think what you're talking about is more than basic needs. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Uh -huh. So more, because in this culture, we're just so used to having more than we need. Yeah. You know, that we tend to look at some of those as necessities, mm -hmm. and they're, n they're not in yeah. terms of, but what is necessary is the, is the relationship. Yeah. So, um, and I think that can be, help parents be very optimistic, mm -hmm. because every parent could provide that. Yeah. Um, you know, because I, I remember reading about a guy once from the poorest of the poor uh, background, and he had a grandmother. That was his primary relationship. And this guy was a doctor later, he just mm -hmm. very successful in life and relationships. Um, and he had that one person, you know, like you said, it's better to have three than ten. Mm -hmm. But it, but even to have one yeah. is almost everything you might need for that. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. As we wrap up this idea of yeah. angels, any final thoughts on this one? Well, I think I know two nine two baby is um, geared toward parents, mm -hmm. but for folks that are not parents watching, mm -hmm. I think it's useful to think about who you could be an angel in the nursery oh, for, yeah. Yeah, and that. Um, being a supportive, nurturing person for an infant that you're not related to or mm -hmm. a toddler who yeah. lives in the apartment, apartment next door yeah. can really, is planting a seed for decades to come yeah. and how critical that is and what an important job that could be too. Okay, yeah. and that's the best final thought I think we could have. So uh, thank you so much for joining yes. me and uh, just a wonderful discussion. And so, and thank you all for joining us on 292 Baby uh, Television. Thank you.